Howdy guys. All right, so in this uh, video, what I wanted to do was walk through the process of exporting our parameters to JSON file. So in the last part, we went through how to write to a text file with Python. In this video, we are going to talk about JSON. So let's go and create a geometry node here in our uh, network view here. And again, I'm just going to make a really simple box maker HDA. I'm just going to put a box inside and then jump up and out. And let's go and make a digital asset out of this. All right, so I am going to do uh, IP, two colons for the namespace, and then 1.0 for the version number. And I'll get rid of these colons here for the name. No reason to have those in the actual label itself. And then I'm just going to save this to the desktop just for now. Hit accept, and we'll destroy all of our spare parameters. Very cool. All right, so. Then what we want to do is we want to go and hide all of our default UI so we can add our own custom stuff in there, just like usual. And I'm going to go and I'm going to create a couple floats in here to, to uh, test with and maybe a string parameter. How about that? So let's drag a string parameter in there and let's go and name these guys appropriately. So I'm just going to call this uh, float uh, A and then give float A for the label and we'll do uh, float B for the internal name and then float B for the label. And then for the string, we'll just call this uh, my uh, string like so, my string. Very cool, we're gonna hit apply. That way we get our parameters, our own custom parameters in there. Okay, very cool. What we wanna do is we want to then come into the scripts tab over here and get a couple of functions set up. So the first thing we need to do in order to write Python for our HDAs, is we need to go down to this event handler in our type properties window. And we want to go and select the Python module that gives us a Python module to work with. So we can start typing Python code. All right, so first one we're going to do is we're going to uh, write our parameters. So we'll say write params for the name of the function. And I'm going to pass in the quarks uh, dictionary that is provided to us by Houdini. And it includes a bunch of information about this particular node, so the HDA node itself. All right, so just to make sure that this is working, I usually like to put in a print statement, and we'll just say uh, this is working. All right, I'm going to hit apply, and then over in our parameters, let's add a new button. So I'm going to drag and drop a button, and I'm going to call this um, export params, and we'll say export params for the label. There we go. Okay. So now we have a button in place that we can use to uh, click and actually fire off our code. Now we need to hook up that button click event to our uh, function over here. Okay, so let's do this. We're going to do uh, who.pwd refers to this node. All right, so this holds all that information about that node. Now we're going to type hm for Houdini module or HDA module, I should say, sorry. And then we need to go and put a dot and we need to put in the name of the function that we want to call from this button click. All right, so I'm just going to do that and we're going to pass in our quarks. All right, and that's a dictionary that holds a bunch of information about this particular node. So with that all done, all right, let's make a little bit more space so you guys can see it all. There we go. With that done, we should down here in the Python shell see this is working when I click this button. Well, look at that. It does in fact work. So if you don't have your Python shell open, just hit this plus button right here and go to your um, Python shell. There you go. There we go. All right. So now that we've got that working, it's pretty easy to start to um, write out our parameters with JSON. So let's get rid of this print statement. And the first thing that we're going to need to do is we need to import, get rid of that there. We need to import um, JSON. So the JSON module. All right. This comes with Python and it allows us to read and write JSON files. Okay, so that's very important in this step. So the next thing that we wanna do is we wanna get the parent node, all right? And parent node refers to this node, all right? This geometry node, this HDA. Um, and the reason why I need to do that because I need to read all the parameters that we just created, all right? So I need to read um, all that particular data. So we need the node itself. So I'm gonna say parent as a variable name. And so parent is gonna be equal to quarks uh, two square brackets because we want to access one of the elements in the dictionary and that element is the node All right, and that'll refer to this particular object right here Cool, so now with that what we can do is we can get all of the parameters Okay, so let's take a look at this. What I want to do is I want to create a new 
variable called params, and this is going to be equal to parent uh, dot per params, like so. All right, and that will return all of the parameters that are actually on this particular uh, node itself. So I'm going to hit apply, and let's actually print that out just so we can verify it. So we're going to say for uh, param in params, I need another A there, all right. Uh, let's just print, um, let's say param.name, param.name. All right, that'll give me the, the actual internal name for each one of the parameters. So I'm going to hit apply, and then go to the Python shell over here, and let's actually hit the button. And look at that. It actually prints out all of our parameters. And you can see at the very end, we have our parameters that we included, but we're getting all of the param uh, parameters for this particular node, all the way up to the, all the transform stuff. And that's because what we've done is we've really just hidden all these parameters. They're still available, right? Uh, for this particular node. And so we're printing out all of these particular parameters. So what we need to do is we need to check to see if they're uh, disabled or visible or, or hidden, right? Um, and so to do that, we need to write a little bit more of a check. So we need to see if a certain particular parameter is disabled or not. All right, so we're going to come down here. We're going to say if uh, not parm dot uh, is disabled, all right, then let's print out the uh, particular name there, hit apply, and let's go and check to see if that actually works for us. All right, so I'm going to hit export params, and you'll notice that we still get all of those parameters. So what we need to do is we actually need to utilize a different um, function here, and that is the function that says params in folder. All right, and so that means um, this allows us then to, from a Python standpoint, look at all the parameters that are just inside of a, a particular folder. All right, and this is a great way to keep all your stuff organized. So I'm just going to put in a new folder and drag and drop all my parameters into there. And uh, I'm going to call this uh, my params for the label. All right, hit apply, and there we go. So then what we need to do is we need to come over here, and rather than just get all the params uh, from the uh, parent node, we need to change this to parms in folder. And then for the argument here, we need to uh, pass a tuple of uh, names. In this case, I really just want to check the one. So that one is called my uh, parms or params, like so. All right, so we can get rid of this if check here because that's still printed out everything. All right, so we can actually just tab in appropriately there. All right, hit apply. So now let's make a little space down here and I'm going to hit export parms, and there you go. So now you can see that we're getting just the parameters that we're interested in. And while I'm at it, why don't we add some values in here? And we'll say, uh, hello, uh, Houdini, like that. Very cool. All right, we also want to make sure that we don't export the, um, the button. All right, we don't want to export the button down here. And so, um, what I need to do is I just need to put another check and just to make sure that we don't equal that particular name. All right. And that name is export prom. So I'm just going to copy this guy, go back to the scripts tab and let's come in here. I'm going to say if, um, parm dot name, let's do this. So parm dot name, uh, does not equal this particular parameter. Then let's print it out like so. So I'm going to hit apply and then there you go. So now we get, just those three parameters that we created. Awesome. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to export all this to a JSON file. All right, and so to do that, we need to set up our data structure. All right, so I'm going to create a new um, uh, dictionary called data, and it's just going to be an empty dictionary for now. And then I want to add my first uh, key into that uh, dictionary. So I'm going to say data dot, um, we'll call this parms, like so. And then I want to initialize that to an empty array. All right, so basically we created a new dictionary, then we added a new entry into that particular um, dictionary called parms, and then we initialize that as an empty array. So then with that done, with for every single param or parameter that we have here, what we want to do is we want to uh, write it to a JSON file. And so we need to build up our data first. All right, and so the first thing I want to do is I want to get the name. So I'm going to create a new variable called name, and then I'm going to initialize that to parm.name. All right, so I'm just setting up the data that I want to insert into uh, these arrays here, these empty arrays in our data structure. And then I want to call uh, or make a new variable called value, and I'm going to say uh, parm dot, 
uh, eval that'll get the actual value out of there. All right. And we also need to make sure that we convert this over to a string. We'll have to convert it back when we read it back in. I'll make some more videos about reading stuff back in um, for both text and JSON files. For now, I just want to focus on writing to these particular um, file formats. All right. So now that I have these two variables set up, all we need to do is we need to um, basically say data uh, dot uh, params or params like so. And we want to say append. So we want to append it. And then I want to open up some parentheses. And then we want to add a new dictionary basically in there. Okay. And then inside of that dictionary, I want to give my keys. All right. So I'm going to say name. That's the first key. And that's going to be equal to name or this particular variable right here. Then we're going to do a, a comma. And then our second entry is going to be value. All right. And we need a colon. And then we'll initialize that to value. Now you don't need the colon or the comma for the last one. Cool. So now we have our data structure. Awesome. And what we need to do now is come all the way back over here. Just make sure we're uh, tabbed in correctly. We can also just go home and then just tab in one more time like so. So now we actually need to write to the JSON file. All right, and so what I'm going to do is I am going to say um, with open. So we want to open a new file. All right, there we go. Just need one space. And I need to give it a path. So in this case, um, let's see here. I want to create a new folder on my desktop here. And let's just do this. We'll call this uh, JSON files like so. We'll dive inside and I'll get this path. Now, you know, if you're making this, you know, a real production tool, you're going to want to manage your paths uh, appropriately. Okay, so we're going to open up a new file. I'm going to make sure all these guys are set up as forward slashes just to be safe. There we go. Again, like I said, you're going to want to, you know, handle your paths a little bit more um, dynamically. Um, and we'll call this uh, params.json. And then I want to set the second parameter here, or second argument, I should say, to uh, write. So we just put a W in there. And it's getting kind of long here. There we go. And I'm going to imp or open that as a particular name. So I'm going to call this my out file. There we go. It's a pretty standard term for that stuff. All right. So now that we've done that, all we need to do is when you say json.dump, or we're going to basically save it to this file. We're going to take all the data that's inside of this uh, data variable here. We're going to dump it into the file. So we're going to say data. We're going to give it the out file. And then I also want to do an indent equals four. That'll just uh, format the uh, file appropriately. All right. So with that, we should get a uh, file, a JSON file. So I'm going to hit apply. And then let's hit export parms. And we get an error. Usually happens. And you just need to go and uh, check to make sure that everything is set up appropriately. And it looks like it's because of this little dot right here. Um, we don't need to do that. Let's hit apply. And let's uh, export again, and we'll get another error. <laughs> you know, it happens quite often. And it looks like uh, I'm just, I am totally into the dot notation here. I switch back and forth between C Sharp and C++ and Python quite often. So that's why I'm doing that. You don't need the dots because we're basically adding a new or accessing the key value from a dictionary there. So there we go. So now we got it. And there's our uh, params.json. Let's actually open this up with uh, code, if I can. Let me actually open code, Visual Studio code. And let's just open up a file here. So let's go to my desktop. And let's open that guy up. And there you go. So now we have all of our values. How cool is that? We just wrote a JSON file from our HDA. And it's, you know, as easy as that. And let me actually pop that open for you guys one more time. So you can just see the, the whole code there. Uh, let me actually open this up. Alt E will open the whole thing up there. So you can see all that. It's actually not too bad. There we go. So I'll leave that up there for a second. So anyways, um, in the future videos here that will most likely be coming next week, um, I will show now how to read all this data back in for both text files and JSON files, and then also how to use it inside of your HDAs to either set the parameters or, you know, even if you're working with other data, maybe it's not parameters, you're saving out other types of data. So you want to be able to read all that stuff back in. Okay, that's what I wanted to show. Thanks so much.